now to our coverage of soybean production in South America and the first of our three-part series detailing the sectors in Argentina and Brazil. For context, in Argentina we traversed 850 miles through farm country and in Brazil our trip took us to Sao Paulo, then into Brazil's largest soybean growing state of Mato Grosso. That state will produce nearly 30 percent of Brazil's beans this year. With a good finish to the growing season and favorable weather during harvest, Brazil could very well overtake the United States as the world's number one soybean producer. Regardless, the crop there will set a record for production, and the same could happen across the border in Argentina. The USDA is expecting Argentina's farmers will produce 54.5 million metric tons of soybeans this year, and Brazil's total will be 89 million metric tons. The U.S. harvested a little more than 89.5 million metric tons during the 2013 season. The new highs in both Argentina and Brazil shouldn't be a surprise once you see how far and how fast the two countries have climbed in soybean production over the last two decades. In Argentina's countryside, northwest of Buenos Aires, there are areas where you can see for miles. And at times, nearly everything making up the picture is soybeans. There is some corn here, a little alfalfa, a few other crops are used in rotations. But at the end of this growing season, Argentine farmers will have planted soybeans at a 6 to 1 ratio compared to corn. Santiago del Salar de Rego farms more than 30,000 acres across Argentina and says the move to more bean acres began about 20 years ago. Well, I think the big change came during the 90s. During the 90s, we started with no-till technology. Around here, we had pastures before with feeding cattle with alfalfa pastures. And in just three or four years, we change, we shift our uh, let's say the way we produce in Argentina and no more grazing cattle around here. The production in Argentina this year will be nearly five times larger than it was in 1990. Alejandro Salemi is growing almost 6,000 acres of soybeans on his operation and says there are two reasons the country shifted its focus to soybeans. The first was no-till farming paired with Roundup Ready technology. The other is an issue that still impacts how producers here do business. The second reason is because of government regulations. Uh, they ban the wheat and the corn exports, so uh, it makes uh, the producers to take decisions about producing more soybeans than the other two crops. Argentina now controls its corn and wheat exports. In addition to setting export quotas for crops like wheat and corn, it also imposes an export tax. The rates for those two commodities are less than the huge bite its government takes out of whole beans. Argentina taxes soybean exports at 35 percent. While Argentina and the U.S. have increased their soybean production at a measured pace since 2000, with occasional dips in output, the chart for Brazil is much more graphic. It starts with production at 39.5 million metric tons in the 2000-2001 season, grows steadily until 2008, then explodes and nearly equals the U.S. in each of the last two periods. Luciano Shozo Shiratsushi of Brazil's research corporation Embrapa says farmers in the Mato Grosso area have been able to utilize better techniques and genetics. Yeah, what is going on uh, the last five years, the, the, the technology is the research and technology came uh, strong in this region and I mean they are using a lot of technology and the, the yield is increasing a lot in the last years. But in addition to gains in technology, Brazilian farmers are also utilizing more land. The country's harvested area has tripled since 1990 and doubled since 2000. The city of Ceriso lies in the center of Mato Grosso. For many farms in this area, the ground sits not far from the Amazon rainforest and still features many trees. Brazil's government requires it. Evil Zirbadine says when he first bought land here, the law required him to maintain at least half of it as a conservation area. Now it's 80 percent. When we started this, under the previous law, we had 50 percent of our property for reserve and the other 50 percent with crops. But now that the, the law changed, we are now required to have 80 percent of our property for a reserve. What we're going to do is keep the initial split between uh, reserve and crop in our first property, 
but now we are buying more land so that we can add more reserve to our total property so that we can reach the 80% goal for the current law. Evil's year thinks if he doesn't match the 80% requirement, eventually he won't be able to sell the crops off his land. Although forest accounts for 61% of land in Brazil, it may not actually be a limiting factor in increasing crop area. Amarilis Romano of the economic consulting firm Tendencia says she believes the total hectares will dramatically rise if another large production is altered. Well, I think we can double, easily double the, the, the amount of land used in, in crops because we have the, the, all the cattle in Brazil. And if we, we just manage to decrease a bit the, all the area occupied by one cow, we can double the, the area. After India, Brazil has more cows than any country on earth. But less than 5% of those animals are held in feedlots. The rest are held in pastures and meadows, which make up nearly three-fourths of Brazil's agricultural land. Decreasing area per cow could open up more cropland, but that production would put more stress on an already shaky and expensive system of roads and rail. In Argentina, the growth is expected to be much more tempered. Juan Ignacio Alonso estimates the size of the country's crop for Bungi and believes there is still room for growth above the current 54 to 55 million metric ton level. You can grow because you have still hectares to deforestate in the, in the northern part of the country. And well, also you have the intensification of the production systems. So well, that's are the, the two ways that the production can still grow here. And we expect that in, in coming years, the, the production will, will reach 60 or more or less that, that, that level. While the production potential may be there, Santiago del Solar Dorego says with the current export tax, if a farmer can't yield more than 30 bushels per acre, there might not be enough incentive to farm the land. Well, sure, we can in increase crop yields with technologies, and that's for sure. And also we can increase area. In the north of our country, we have a very big potential. And the south and west from Argentina, some dry regions that have some potential to produce with lower yields today, but they can increase tomorrow. But the price is not enough today. If you get the right price, the production will come. Back in the United States, private estimates are expecting U.S. farmers will put more soybeans in the ground this spring by scaling back corn acres. Based on the trends and our conversations in South America, that's one commonality among the world's top three soybean-producing countries.